Our panel, Tom Rogan, columnist for National Review and Opportunity Lives. A.B. Stoddard, associate editor at Real Clear Politics. Katie Pavlich, news editor at townhall.com. And Charles Hurt, opinion editor for The Washington Times. Charlie, do you think people yet realize, especially in the Democratic Party, why Donald Trump won? No, and I think that that has uh, probably a lot to do with why we've seen all of these protests in the weekend after uh, after the, the um, inauguration, because I think a lot of people are still completely bewildered. But, um, but you know, I think one of the most important things about Trump's ascendancy is the fact that he didn't, he, you know, he, he, he was running as a Republican, but the first thing he did is he ran against the Republican Party. And he didn't just run against them, he ran against them ferociously viciously attacking Republicans. And he, and, and, and he has impeccable timing, um, and he understood the moment that so many people, so many conservatives or, or right or leaning uh, voters in the country who typically vote Republican were so fed up, not only with that, but also with Republicans. And so then, when, then once he cleared that field and then was able to sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, face off against the Democrat, it was, a, it was you know, he, he, had, he had offended everybody that, that people uh, were disgusted with and tired, tired of. A.B., the Democrats this election seemed to abandon uh, a part of their base, and that was the white working class, um, rural, unionized, working men and women, uh, and that came back to bite them. Well, in truth, they had been slipping away for a while. Some of them did end up voting for um, uh, Barack Obama in 2012 and then voted for Trump, but they were really hemorrhaging that support um, for a while, sort of tilting towards a coalition of, um, you know, very well-educated whites along with uh, minorities and young people and um, really hewing to this Obama coalition that could bring them success and they hoped would bring Hillary Clinton success. And the truth is, part of that coalition stayed home and had they come to the polls, she would have won. Um, but she clearly turned her back on those communities, even with President Obama at the time criticizing her, saying, you've got to go to Ohio, you've got to go to Iowa, I'll go for you. And her campaign saying, no, let's just write it off. And it was a fatal error. Katie, we see Saturday these uh, marches, the Women's March, uh, not only here in Washington, D.C., but around the country. Uh, and it looks like impressive numbers in, in a number of different cities, including here. Um, saying and raising concerns about women's issues and also about this new president. I guess people look at that and say, where were they <laughs> at the election? Well, and they would come back with the argument we've been hearing for months is that, well, they voted for Hillary Clinton in the popular vote, which of course she won. And, and so I would say a lot of these women were in California, for example. Um, but New York or, or New York or Boston right or um, like but the truth is that Donald Trump won the election through the electoral college that's how how it works and it's fine that they're out marching in the streets now but they probably should have done this before election day to come out and get the energy out for Hillary Clinton the fact is that the Obama coalition didn't show up for her Donald Trump won not because Republicans came out to vote for him but because independents and as we've just been discussing voters that the Democrat Party has been ignoring for years now uh, decided not to go after even the Bernie Sanders Sanders type voters that they decided and took advantage of and for granted thinking they would come out and vote for Hillary Clinton. And when you actually look at the numbers over the course of Barack Obama's presidency, actually I'm very surprised that we didn't see this coming and especially the Democrats didn't see this coming. When you see the astounding number of a thousand plus seats that Democrats have lost across the country over the past eight years. Um, and, and not having to look at that as the DNC and going, what is happening and how do we prevent this going into an election that would be tough anyway for Democrats to take control of, considering there was a Democrat in office for the past year, eight years, and historically it's difficult for the incumbent party to remain in power. Obviously, Tom, uh, Barack Obama's legacy, first African-American president, saved us from a recession going over the cliff, uh, he would argue. and. But Britt Hume over the weekend said, you know, his biggest, the biggest part of his legacy, two words, Donald Trump. That's who follows Barack Obama. Right. And I think it's striking that 
that is the ultimate reality that for all the campaigning, the president who came in with this narrative of hope and change, that he was going to fundamentally reshape American politics, has been, uh, to say, repudiated. I mean, the, the word, it's hard to define a word in terms of what Donald Trump represents there. But I think there are two interesting things that come out. As, as Katie notes, you've seen that usurpation of power from Democrats at the state legislative level over this president or the former president's tenure in office and um, that I think fixes more with the sort of traditional you know conserve the Paul Ryan element of restrictions and spending uh, or the Tea Party element in the house I wonder though to the degree that now Trump has come in uh, as tomorrow he gets to work in the first day of the, the new week what are we going to see in terms of the uh, schisms between those House Republican elements that really do not like, for example, the idea of infrastructure spending uh, that he has discussed, um, but also the fact that Trump really does feel this mandate, uh, this bringing, um, as AB notes, of traditional Democratic voters. So I think there's a brewing conflict below the surface here that will be interesting to assess. Yeah, you know, I bring back up the, the Saturday protests because they, they were impressive, but there were also some moments uh, in those protests that uh, some of them said that they wanted to be the liberal Tea Party. The, the left's Tea Party and start this movement on day one of this new administration.